I want to invite Pastor Wayne and Crystal up to the platform right now. And they've journeyed through a very complicated part of their lives and their marriage and their kids. And I want them to share their story today about how they journeyed with their son, Wyatt. We love Wyatt. Wyatt's a part of our church, tends to here nearly every week, every Sunday. But I would imagine that where Wyatt is today is probably what, not what they thought when Wyatt was one years old or six months old. So Pastor Wayne and Chris have been part of our church over 20 years, uh, done a couple different journeys and everything, but uh, we love them. We love their heart. Uh, they, they love the church and they love what God's doing. And so we're so thankful you guys would share today and just maybe share today your journey with the Lord and and uh, what kind of what happened with, with Wyatt maybe when he was born and kind of what went on. So, Well, when Wyatt was born, there was some birth trauma. Um, I was in labor for 16 and a half hours, pushing for three and a half hours. Um, and when he was actually born, the cord was wrapped around his neck three times and he was blue. And so when they, the doctor quickly removed it and um, the scores that they give you as far as to indicate that your baby's healthy, his scores were fine, so we didn't see anything that was uh, any challenges. Okay. Um, everything seemed fine, you know, normal kid, as far as that, except for uh, he would begin to, as he developed, organize his toys from largest to smallest. Um, other thing is uh, he, would, he was always very quiet and uh, not more than concerning because I'm more of an introvert. He was a party and I'm the librarian. He was so quiet, uh, but he probably looked you in the eye um, when you talked to him. Um, uh, the other thing was uh, he, he was, it wasn't stubborn, I remember one time, he wouldn't eat some of his vegetables. I said, you're going to sit there and eat your vegetables. An hour later, he's still sitting there looking at it. I gave up. I came in. I said, okay, you're, you're, you're done. So there were indicators, but not anything huge until it was the year before he was going to go to kindergarten here. And he was at the preschool when the director of the preschool came in and she said, I'm going to have a talk with you. And I'm like, okay, you have okay. And she said, I, I think, why um, you need to have him tested. And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, I think he has a learning disability or something wrong. And I'm like, no, not mm-hmm. my son. No, I don't, I don't think you're right. Uh, I think you're wrong. Um, long story short, um, when he had him tested, he started kindergarten here. Um, but it became very clear uh, a month in um, that he was diagnosed with autism. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, if you've ever had anything happen with your kids, at least for a dad, automatically you're in denial. It's like, you guys are all wrong. I know you're experts in your field, but you're wrong. Um, so that's how I processed it um, immediately. And I went into information mode. I'm a researcher. So I automatically threw myself into getting all the information I could to see how I could fix it. Yeah, you guys talked about how you both kind of approached it differently at the very beginning. And did that bring um, like strife in a sense in those moments? Or how did you guys kind of deal with some of that in even your marriage? Well, again, yeah, because it automatically puts you as, as a, a, a dad, you handle it differently. As a mom, you handle it differently. So there's automatically you're kind of going two different directions as how you think you need to, to process this. And so for me, it was a moment as I'm praying, as I'm asking God, you know, how, how do I do this now? How, how as a dad do I father what it means for an autistic child? Because at that moment, I don't have any information. I don't know what that means. I, I, I didn't know at that moment, you know, am I not, I'm never going to see my son uh, score a touchdown or, or hit a home run. And I have to come to grips with that. And, and I have, and I did very quickly because he, he excels in so many other ways. But, you know, as a dad, you kind of got to work through that process. And, and it came to a point where I was praying one day and seeking the Lord because I wanted healing. You know, you want, I want God to heal my son. I want him to do that. And God spoke to me, and, and Crystal's different, but God spoke to me and he said, what, what, what I'm doing in Wyatt is between me and Wyatt. I just need you to be his dad. Wow. That's good. I think when um, it may not be autism that your family is dealing with, you may have some other special need or developmental disability, but um, 
I think that one of the things that I have just come to grips with, Pastor Josh, is there, um, there is a process of grieving that needs to happen because the Lord spoke to me at one point and he said, Crystal, you need to learn to joy in Wyatt. And um, what that meant for me is I had to quit asking why and start asking what now. And I had to look at um, what is, and like Wayne said, um, you allow yourself to go through a grieving process. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is in Psalm, where it talks about that we pour out our heart to the Lord. So I have poured out my heart to the Lord. I have yelled at the Lord. I have cried to the Lord. Just all of it, whether you think it's appropriate or Christian or not, me and Jesus have had, have had some rumbles. And so we, and what's so beautiful about that is that he's been there every moment. He's been able to handle every moment of grief and every moment when I've misunderstood his character toward my son. And so that's been a really beautiful journey and a continual journey of trust. But it's really important that we be able to grieve um, for the child that we thought we would have so it can give birth to the child that God gave us. So why it is how old now? He's 27. I know I don't look that old, but yes. (laughs) Wayne married you when we were like, we're 15, Oh, I know, right? Like, oh. Hey, no, hey, no. <laughs> Don't give me trouble. No, he's 27, 27, and our daughter, Bethany, is 24. She does not have any special needs. How, how, how has that 27 years, maybe a little bit of the journey, was it like overnight? Was it, uh, I mean, in a sense of help others, I think, in the room that are walking through, maybe not the same kind of complications you guys have, but other kind of complications that... It's not easy, right? It's not easy being a parent. It's not easy being a grandparent. It's not easy having kids. Um, they're wonderful. But they talk about that 27-year journey. Of what advice you could give us today, those online, about how to journey with the Lord? In a sense that, how did you trust your family to Jesus over the last 27 years? Well, uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. Is, is the, the first thing I would encourage anybody that if they find out if they have a, a child with special needs is, uh, you know, the first... 20, 22 years, um, you know, you're in the educational system. And then you got to remember that's your child and they're there for you, not you for them. So they're, they're going to come and they're going to have their, exp- but, but you get, you're, you, you tell them what you want them to do for your child. Okay. You're, you're their advocate. So advocate for them. Um, and then when they reach 22 is, is when they age out of that. Um, but I would encourage you just be, I, I would tell them every time I would meet for IEPs, if you know what IEP is, it's been Thing. Individual education plan. Yeah, I would say I'm the dad that's going to show up every time, just so you know. Uh, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. So just be there, work through the system, because they're there and they do care. And uh, we, we had some phenomenal teachers that, that were a blessing uh, that helped Wyatt to develop to where he is, to where he's functioning. So I would just say walk, walk through what the process is and get the best advantages that you can and pray and just ask God to give you favor in that. And then there's there are other programs beyond uh, the education educational system that you just, you got to get to, you got to, and it takes work and it takes time. Research. Research um, to get in there, but, it, but it's out there, but, but you, but you got to do the footwork to do it. That's great. I know why it's a joy to get a chance. I think he'll be here 11 o'clock. He'll be here in a 11, second service. You'll usually see him worship. And uh, he's so much fun. Uh, we've gone camping with him and he has the best jokes. And I keep trying to get him to come back camping with us, but he goes, no, Pastor, oh, you know, not so bad, Josh, but uh, I like civilization. That's what he says. So, uh, I keep, so I keep trying to get him to go, but one of these days. But what would, like, just a, kind of last thing you'd like to say, just, again, again, how you guys have maybe come closer to the Lord through this. And I appreciate what you talked about, Chris, about you grieved the process, but now you're having joy in the process. Maybe just talk a, just one more moment on that, if you could. Um, I think, you know, for us, um, sorry, I lose my words sometimes. Um, one of the important things that I would encourage every family who has a child with special needs, because it can seem engulfing, and you can lose yourself in the despair of what isn't, Um, Early on, when Wyatt was initially diagnosed at the age of seven, Wayne sent me away for the weekend but had booked a hotel for me, and I just needed to spend time with the Lord. And so I knew what, what the experts, what the teachers, what the diagnosis, all the things we'd been told, but I needed to get God's word over my son. 
And so what we did is we have sought the Lord about his word over our son. And I know I wake up every day. I've seen my mom healed of cancer. But then I had another friend who she went to be with Jesus rather than being healed. So I live in a place of peace knowing that I could wake up tomorrow and my son could uh, have no autism or developmental disability. But I also know that if his healing doesn't come until heaven, that the Lord will help us every moment as he's been doing. So, The, the one thing that I, I can say, and, and uh, if you ever have an opportunity uh, to interact with Wyatt, is, is he's not good necessarily socially, because um, that's just part, part of it. So uh, he has incredible long-term memory. I, I kind of have fun with, uh, he has memorized he all the, the dates off. and names of all of the Disney movies, Pixar and everything. You can pull out, ask anyone, and he'll tell you the year it came out and the list of when it came out. So I do that sometimes just for fun. Um, but this is one thing about he, the way his autism works is things are just very black and white. And so when it comes to his relationship with the Lord and his faith, it's just black and white. He loves Jesus. He loves God. God's in heaven. He's going to go to heaven someday. When someone passes away, they go to heaven. So he doesn't grieve. He doesn't, there's a lot of things that he doesn't deal with that we do because it's just, that's the way it is in his mind. So his, his level of faith is so incredible and, and so just a matter of fact that he's not affected by a lot of things that we are because of that. And uh, if you ever want to have somebody pray for you, th- the man prays because he prays so matter of fact, like it's going to happen that it's incredible. And that's just part of the, the gift that he is. I think, um, yeah. Um, one of the things that was special today is um, just interacting with special needs family. I know that sometimes people just don't know what to do. They don't want to say the wrong thing. But it was really special for me to have the Williams family here, and they may not even remember, but their son Matthew would see our Wyatt during high school, and he would always greet Wyatt by name. I know that Pastor Josh and Julie really um, endeavor to interact with him, and Pastor Trevor really um, makes makes time for Wyatt. And um, he may, because he communicates differently, and it takes him a little bit to process, you may say, hi, Wyatt, and he may be, oh, hello. Um, but if you ask him about Batman, Transformers, Disney, or Pixar, then you might want to make sure you have an extra 30 minutes in your schedule. Um, but we, um, we as a family, we welcome questions. We are so um, willing. We are so um, ready to journey alongside under other special needs families. I know the Menas have been really pivotal for us. I remember one time, Michelle, when we were at um, Apple Valley, I hate confrontation. It literally makes me ill, and it's crazy that I have a child I have to advocate for. And she said, Crystal, you, this is Michelle, listen, Crystal, you are the parent, and they have to do what you say. And I'm like, okay, all right, so. That's great. Yeah. Well, give them a hand. Thank you so much. Uh, there, they are two that, uh, I know they're not perfect, but they sure have walked well, well with what God has and their family and their, and their dear, dear two kids. So Jesus, holding the little girl's hand, says to her, Talitha Hom, which means little girl, get up. And the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. They're overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus, I love this. Jesus gives him strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And I love this. He goes, get her something to eat, right? Isn't that like Jesus? The miracle happens. Okay, she's going to be hungry. So I recognize today that maybe in your family, that healing may not have happened. We heard that from the boys today. They're believing for it. They're still praying for it, but they're trusting the Lord. I know that in your mess, it may not be the answer that you want to have happen. Maybe it's not today where you want it to be in your life. But I love the sense that Jesus is in our mess, that Jesus cares, that Jesus walks with us in difficult times. And my heart today as your pastor is turn to Jesus. 
We can turn to a lot of things. We have great things. We have great medical institutions and organizations across our nation and our cities. But friends, today the most important thing you can do is trust your family to Jesus. Amen? Will you bow your heads with me today? Lord, I thank you that you're working in our mess right now. Lord, you're working in our situations that seem impossible. Lord, you're working in our lives, Lord, where we're looking for answers and we don't have any. But you're right there, God. Your word says you don't leave us. Your word says that you walk with us. Your word says that we don't need to be discouraged, that you will hold us in your victorious right hand. So I pray, God, today over every family in this place, Lord, every child represented, every grandchild, Lord, nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles, Lord, siblings today, brothers and sisters, parents, I pray, God, today that you would hold us in your victorious right hand. Lord, some of us are so frail today. Some of us are just holding on by our fingertips, it seems. So today we make the statement, we trust in you and we turn to you today. And we know, Lord, that you're standing right beside us. We may have put you off for years, but Lord, you're right there next to us. I pray, God, today your encouragement. I pray, God, today that you'd be the God of all hope and peace as we trust in you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, make yourself known today in Jesus' name. And friends, before I let you go today, I just want to ask this question. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus to this world. He died upon the cross, which means he basically gave his life because only God could pay your penalty and mine for what we call sin, which means the wrong things that we've done in life. But Jesus has come to give you life today. That's what we celebrated with water baptisms, that it's not what water baptisms doesn't save us at all. It's Jesus does. So I want to encourage you today. Maybe you're saying, you know, Pastor, that's me. Would you pray for him? We're not going to single you out. We have our altar team here at the end that would love to pray with you and others here. There's a moment of decision, a moment where we say, yes, I need a Savior. I need Jesus. I don't know all of you today, but the Lord sees you today. I don't know who's online today, but God sees you. He loves you. He knows you today. But that's you. would say, you know, Pastor, would you pray for me? Just lift your hand up. Get my attention. Just in the moment of decision, I see those hands right there. Anybody else today? See those hands in the back today? Amen. Anybody in the balcony today? It's kind of dark up there. Those online today, we're all going to just say this prayer as a prayer of dedication to the Lord today. Maybe you're with the Lord. That's awesome. Well, you're praying it for somebody else today because we're a family. So would you please repeat after me? Jesus, I love you. Thanks for loving me. Thanks for giving your life for me. Please forgive me. I put my trust in you. Uh, My faith is in you. And you are my hope today. Be in my life today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give those a hand today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand to your feet today across this place. Altar team, would you come and fill this place? If you need prayer today, you, you need someone to walk with you. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, come by. We'd love to pray with you and help you today. So God bless your church. Have a great rest of your Sunday.